Um, so everyone, welcome to Kitchen Party. This is the third third season that Renee and I have been gracing your home. Hopefully, you guys have been tuning in every single Thursday. Yes, Renee, I will do that as well. As we will bow to our audience and we'll say, without you guys, Kitchen Party does not exist. So here's how this show works. First of all, my name is Babette Peppa. I am the founder of Bakespace.com and one of the co-hosts of Kitchen Party. Part of the show is participation from the audience. So if you're watching at home and you have a question or you want to give some insight or you want to post a picture of what you're drinking, you can chat with us a couple different ways. One is you can, if you're on our Google Plus event page, uh, you can leave a comment there, upload a picture, uh, post a question and we we watch that throughout the show so that we try to get your questions answered. Another way is on Twitter where you can use the hashtag. We have two hashtags tonight. Usually it's just kitchen party, um, but we're also using uncork chocolate. So look for that hashtag as well um, to communicate with us and we'll make sure that we get your questions answered. And also if you're drinking tonight with us, uh, whatever it is you're drinking, uh, post a picture online and uh, we'd love to um, have, we'd love to Cheers with you. Um, let me introduce my co-host, Renee Lynch. Do you want to tell the folks who are just tuning in, if they don't know you already, uh, a little bit about yourself? Sure. I'm Renee Lynch. I'm a writer and editor at the LA Times. I work across a number of feature sections, including health and food. Excellent. Are you, do you have anything that's happening or that's, um, that's going to be on in the paper this week? Uh, actually, I have a story running in Saturday's paper about Blender Girl and her book and her new iPhone app and uh, iPad app, which is her, the new app is very cool. It's very cool. cool. For those of you who've watched Kitchen Party in the, in the before, Tess Masters has been a guest, so we adore her, so make sure you download her app, make sure you check out her recipes, and then also, I think it's BlenderGirl.com, right? Is that her website? Mm -hmm. Like, that's the full URL? That's, yep. Well, we love Tess. Um, this show is sponsored by Scharfenberger Chocolate. Now, I am a personal fan of Scharfenberger for, for one particular reason, is that it's the first chocolate I've ever tried that I have a cupcake recipe that the centers are chocolate. And it, I like that you can see like a creamy chocolate. Every other chocolate I've used has just melted into the cake. So I became a fan instantly. So when they came to us and said, hey, we want to do a chocolate and wine pairing show, are you interested? I'm like, hell yeah, let's do this thing. <laughs> they have an expert. Hey, Sai, welcome. Thank you. Where, where are you? Uh, where are you chiming in from? I am lucky enough to be at the Ferrari Carano Winery, uh, just outside of Healdsburg, lovely winery in Dry Creek Valley. It's awesome that they they supplied us all of the wine for tonight. I want to I want to definitely give a shout out to them as well. Thank you so much for that. And also Scharfenberger for all the chocolate as well. We have three um, also influencers uh, who are here today who are amazing. Some of the top food and wine bloggers that we know. Um, also, I have, it's like a helicopter going above me. It's like LA is under attack or something. <laughs> that. Uh, the, three, the three bloggers and uh, content creators that we have, we have Elise Bauer from simplyrecipes.com. Probably, I would say, Elise, is, are you like the number one food webs, like food blogging website in the world? I think you are. Uh, I don't think anymore. <laughs> no, no. Well, they, <laughs> but it's still pretty. It's still pretty big, and um, and I've been around. Simply Recipes has been around for I think eleven years. So we started in two thousand and three, and yeah, a lot of fun. I think uh, Elise, you've pretty much covered every recipe in the book because I know when I'm looking for something, when I have a hankering for something, I uh, go to Google and I say Simply Recipes and. Uh, uh, your whatever dish I'm looking for, and I know you're always one of the top results that pop up right away. And I love seeing your recipes because I know I can always count on them. You're Thank one of the few you. blogging websites that I know if I go to and I find a recipe, I don't have to even look at the reviews. I know it's going to work, and uh, I can get in the kitchen and get cooking. So I appreciate so much what you do and the care that you put into your recipes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Renee, that's, you're so sweet. That's really sweet, Renee. Come in. That is. I use her. I use so many of her recipes. I really do. And I'm like usually like in a, in like I need this recipe in two seconds, and I know I can always find it there. Yeah. It's like you you just pulled on my little heartstring. I feel so. <laughs> I 
I feel so honored Elisa's on the show today. Because you know, also me, I always see the things that don't work, you know. <laughs> I, I, I hear about everything that doesn't work, and so when people tell me things actually work for them, I'm so happy. <laughs> so thank you, Renee. I really appreciate it. <laughs> I also want to uh, to welcome uh, Nanette. Nanette, do you say your last name Eaton? Eaton, like, like eat on. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect for the show. Now, Nanette, what are you already drinking? This is the Chardonnay. Oh. I pre-tasted. <laughs> <laughs> now, for I'm those of you, for, for, for those of you who want to follow Nanette online, you can find her on Twitter at Wine Harlot with an S at the end. Um, can you want to tell us a little bit about your website and uh, and what people can find when they go to your website? Um, I've been blogging for about six years and I wanted to make it fresh and fun. Sometimes I think wine, com the wine community makes it very inapproachable and um, makes it pe makes people feel um, insecure about what they're doing. So I just thought if we could make it fun and fresh and um, a little silly and irreverent, that people would enjoy drinking wine more um, and maybe drink more because they were feeling more confident about about what they did. Because there seems to be sometimes a lot of rules, and we're rule breakers. <laughs> I and you say, know what? If anything, we like the motto: "Drink more." <laughs> And why wine, wine should be fun. People take it too seriously. <laughs> well, or sometimes I think with women, pe they feel insecure. They're like, am I doing it right? right. right. There's all these rules. And I'm like, well, there's guidelines. You know, that like steak and, and um, Cabernet is a good pairing. But I think people like with chocolate, I don't particularly think, I think it's a challenging pairing. So I can't wait to get to the women. <laughs> And talk about a little bit more the tips so that people can be more successful when they're pairing dessert. Mm -hmm. I know. I was thinking I'm so happy we have Cy here. Cy, when, when you hear stuff like that about chocolate and wine, are, do you, do, are, do you in your mind, are you like, oh, I've heard that so many times, but they have no idea? Or are you like, yes, it's very challenging? I, I sympathize with comments like that very well because I used to be the same. I, I thought pairing chocolate, particularly red wine, uh, just didn't work. But then I discovered that everybody else was doing it wrong. Uh, and once you do it right, it's a wonderful experience. That's awesome. Well, I want to also introduce our third influencer that we have, Amy. Now, is it Koran Power? It's Corin. Corin. Is that is that Welch or what is that? It is. That is. Mm. And as my husband says, we're the conquered people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not conquered. I am conquering wine. <laughs> <laughs> now, for those of you who want to follow her on Twitter, you can get her at Wine Wonket, uh, is her Twitter handle. And do you want to tell us a little bit about your website? Sure. Um, we've been writing since uh, 2007. My husband actually started the blog, but he gets a little busy bowling and with his bourbon, which is where he is tonight. Um, so we, like Nanette, um, we wanted to make it approachable, fun, and we love Nanette because we're role breakers too. We love hanging out with her and um, drinking with her as much as possible. Um, so Aww. we write about we write about um, wine, food, bourbon, lifestyle, as well as the politics. We'll get into the politics of wine. Um, the one cap part is because I'm kind of a political geek. So I'll get into the politics of wine, shipping laws, that kind of stuff, which sounds boring, but what it does is it, it keeps the consumer from being able to get the wine he wants in the state he lives in. So we want to make sure anybody can drink whatever they want, wherever they want. See that? Hey, oh, hey. <laughs> I, feel like, yeah. I wish I had my glasses for and I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> No, now each of you guys in size. We, well. we should do a cheers to that. We should do oh, this. We, yes. we need to fill our glasses first. <laughs> See, Elisa, oh, you guys are rookies. Yeah. Do you have your glasses full yet? Oh, uh, no. Should I be filling the glasses? Should we be doing that? Or at least. <laughs> I've opened the bottles. You should always be ready. 
See, Elise and I are the only ones who follow directions. <laughs> I, want to, I want to let everyone know that. I want to, I want to go on the record saying that. Um, now, let's before we before we start, I want to get into just knowing kind of where everyone is in terms of their chocolate comfort, which sounds really weird. <laughs> but I think it's important to know: Are we a milk chocolate, white chocolate, dark chocolate fan? So, um, Amy, do you want to do you want to start? Do you want to tell us if you're White chocolate, dark chocolate, or white chocolate fan? I am dark, 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 decadent, as dark as possible, as bitter as possible, and just black chocolate. Yeah. Sai, what about you? Dark chocolate, definitely, yes. Yeah. At least, oh, go ahead. What were you going to say, Sai? No, that's it. I, milk chocolate it does have its place, but it's got to be a really good milk chocolate. Now, Elise, what about you? I completely agree with Sai. Um, I actually went through a, a very strong dark chocolate phase for a while, and then I rediscovered really good quality milk chocolate, and mm. that's all I want is good quality milk chocolate. And uh, so it just shows that how our tastes can change. So there you go. These I, I still like dark chocolate, but I really love good quality milk chocolate. Uh, what about Nanette? Well, I'm going to be the rule breaker here. Um, my favorite is Jean Duya. And Scharfenberger did a series, what, eight or ten years ago? Yeah. And Jean Duya is normally like a milk infused with hazelnuts, and it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Scharfenberger did it with, like, maybe not quite milk, it was a little bit darker. And it was fantastic. Mm. Bring it back. Bring it back. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> Nanette, you have to tweet the name of that. Maybe we could start a little campaign to get him to bring well, it back. To say, I don't know what it is, but it sounds great. <laughs> but he's so funny. He's like, that would be nice. That means mm -hmm. it's not going to happen anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> we could start rattling the cages for it. Renee, well, what I, about you? Oh, I'm sorry, Nanette. What were you saying? You know, well, I was going to say, me and my 60,000 Twitter followers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that might help. <laughs> <laughs> that might help. <laughs> it's, you're, it's like I'm um, holding them hostage. You're like, I'm going to, it's like you're, uh, you're giving them a preview of, you better do it or else I'm going to unleash the Kraken on you guys. <laughs> now, Renee, what about you? That's how you want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You know, um, I think I'm somewhere in between. I, I don't like things that are super, super sweet. So um, I, I think I'd like to maybe explore a little more some high-quality milk chocolate that's just not, like, overly sugarly, sugary. But I tend towards the darker chocolate that are just less sweet. Hmm. That's interesting. I'm totally – I love milk chocolate. Uh, my better half is a dark chocolate, which – drives us crazy because when we go to the grocery store and he comes back, like when I haven't shopped with him, he brings the darn dark chocolate. And I'm like, I can't eat this stuff. Um, Scharfenberger, you know, Nanette, I have the same story. Scharfenberger had a chocolate that I found, and it was a sea salt. It was so good. I cannot find that. I look every time I go to the grocery store. I look for it, and I cannot find it. And so maybe we should combine our Twitter followers, combine our communities, <laughs> and do a Kickstarter campaign. Be like, don't put any money. Just support <laughs> us. <laughs> it's not really a Kickstarter campaign. It's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. All right. I'm going to be so, persona non grata at Scharfenberger. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I think what we should, uh, Sai, I want to I want to spend like a, min a couple of minutes talking about your experience and, and mm -hmm. how you became a chocolate expert and what does that mean so that the folks who are watching at home, and also if you're watching at home, remember you can use our Google event page to leave a question. You can also send a message on Twitter using Uncork Chocolate and the hashtag Kitchen Party. We'll be following those. Renee, you're going to do Twitter? Yes, actually, Babette, before you get to Sai, if you wouldn't yes. mind, I would like to introduce you to a few uh, rule breakers who are following along on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much, guys, for joining in. Mama Caruso, hello. You, you have to see this photo. Breaking the rules, red wine in a mason jar. A true nod to kitchen party <laughs> history and lore. I love it. I love it. And then we also so have uh, <laughs> Michelle Stevens. Hey, Michelle. She's also tuning in. And she says, in her opinion, white chocolate is not really chocolate. 
So I don't know. We may have a Babette and Michelle showdown at some point. I don't know. But also joining us on Twitter, uh, Jean Benedict. Jean, is so nice for you to want to see you tuning in. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll keep monitoring. We'll keep monitoring the uh, the Twitter account. But let us know what you think, and uh, we'll pass your questions along. You know, Nich uh, uh, Nichelle Stevens w is with Cupcakes Take the Cake. She's the founder of that site, which is like the number one cupcake blog on the web. Good friend of ours. She also produces our Tech Munch conference all over the country. And I think that would be good, Nichelle. You and I can do a duel. Because I think white chocolate <laughs> she knows is awesome. She a thing awesome. or two about chocolate. She knows yeah. about chocolate. All right, then, all right. And then one last, Rita Patil just tweeted a, a great photo to uh, celebrate tonight. And it's... It's wine time photo, so you got to check that out. It's a flag. <laughs> it's, it's wine o'clock. It's wine o'clock. So, Sai, so, now let's get back to business. Yes. How did you get the title, Chocolate Expert? And how um, can I get that title? <laughs> um, learn about chocolate for 12 or 15 years, and then you'll be there. So you can't just eat it for 12 or 15 years. That certainly helps, yes. But the way I got into it really was as a retailer. I used to manage chocolate shops. So I had to learn a lot about the chocolate in order to sell it to people. Um, what a then, horrible job. Oh, a dreadful job, yes. Um, so since I've given up retailing, I just now focus on education. So I'm a chocolate educator for Scharfenberger. So I just get to go around and talk about chocolates to people. That is a dream job if I ever heard of one. <laughs> it's not bad. There are worse things, certainly. I could I could imagine like if you go to you know how at school they have like bring your parent to the school uh -huh. and tell them what you do? Every kid would just be like, I have to be you. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> how did you get hooked up with Scharfenberger? Um, well, when I moved over to this country, um, I, I did a few other jobs and then thought time to get back into chocolate um, and just looked around in San Francisco and luckily hooked up with Scharfenberger as a retailer. Have you ever been responsible for a new flavor? <laughs> <laughs> or bringing Not back an old one? <laughs> no, so well, yes, I did actually. The the sea salt um, chocolate that you mentioned was something that I did. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> so we might have an in. We might have an in on this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now well, you know that you have a big fan. Good. Good. Well, I still do make that sea salt chocolate. It's just not that easy to get. So I'll I... talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> See, but. Now I want them like limited edition, the Jean yeah. wine harlot's favorite, like with a little sticker <laughs> and then the big space, the salted. Yeah, well, let's not hold our breath for that. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know what? Once we start drinking the wine, we're gonna convince him to come to our side, girl. So let's let's all yeah. like we'll stay focused. We'll yeah, I, I. I'm not feeling very welcome here when you're <laughs> shutting me down on the Jandouya. <laughs> so, so Sai, well, yes. let's we're gonna start doing the pairings now. What are we gonna learn today? What's what's the goal of um, of enlightening us? Because obviously we can eat chocolate and we can have wine, and I mean, who's gonna throw those out of bed like you? Mm. You love that stuff, but mm -hmm. the goal—the goal for today—is this so that people can start thinking of new flavors? Is this so that people cannot be intimidated by pairing, or is this like a really simple way to have a dessert, like an adult candy bar? Um, what's uh, what's the goal for today? Well, certainly we're going to end up with what I think is is just the most perfect and delightful dessert. But mm -hmm. to start with, I think the goal is just to. Um, educate people that pairing wine and chocolate is almost a natural thing to do. The two products have so many similarities in their flavor characteristics that pairing one with another is, is like a little adventure each time you do it. And I think the important thing to realize is that you're not looking for a wine to complement a chocolate or the other way around. This is not like choosing the perfect wine to go with your lobster thermidor. 
This is like setting up a contest between a wine and a chocolate and to see if that contest has a successful end. Oh, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Now I feel like um I feel like we're up for the challenge. Yeah, good. <laughs> should, should we start with the first pairing? What's sure. the first pairing? Yeah, well, the golden rule of, of wine and chocolate pairing is to start light and then move on to the heavier ones. So what we're going to start with is the lightest of our dark chocolates. And this is a 62% semi-sweet. Uh, and we're going to pair this with the Ferrari Carano Chardonnay. Now, I usually pair this 62% with a fairly light red wine, a light Pinot or a Sangiovese, some sort of Chianti-style red. But I've just recently discovered that it actually pairs really well with the Chardonnay. So are we ready to get into it? Yeah. I mm, think it smells good. Always yeah. be prepared. Always <laughs> be prepared. So the first thing is a sip. Of the wine. Ooh. Leave your chocolate for a minute. Sip of the wine. Sip. And I like to think that the first sip is really just an early warning for your palate to tell it that there's wine around. And I just realized I, I took a bite of the chocolate. Uh, no, wait. I know. I just spit it out. <laughs> I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anyone so, saw that. Don't yeah, so, rewind no, the video. Not yet. <laughs> um, so a second sip of the wine, I think, allows your taste buds to pick up more of the flavors once your palate is used to the wine. So we just want to do a little wine tasting here and, and pick up the flavor notes and the characteristics of this wine. And we'll pay particular attention, I think, to the acidity. I think mm -hmm. this is a, just a classic California Chardonnay. It's got all the butteriness that you would expect from a Chardonnay. I think. Oh, Elise and Amy and um, Nanette and Renee, do you guys drink Chardonnay a lot? I love Chardonnay. I don't. I drink. A, I drink Sauvignon Blanc. I don't mm -hmm. usually drink seven, um, Chardonnay. And I'm more of a red wine, but I will mm -hmm. do a Chardonnay with chicken. Um, and sometimes Chardonnay with hazelnut chocolate. Yeah. I'm an equal opportunity offender. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have the chocolate ready. Yeah. Now, what is it? Size? Yeah. So. Size? <laughs> yes. One of the things that I've started doing recently is to um, to chew the wine. I know that sounds mm -hmm. weird, but rather than just take a little dainty sip, but to just mm -hmm. get that wine in my mouth and then chew it so it gets all over the mm -hmm. tongue and the mouth and Absolutely. and I'm finding that's just a great great way to taste and enjoy wine. Good, whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, so having Hey yes. Sai, before you mm -hmm. before you continue, I just want to remind everyone that uh, we are doing two giveaways during the show. Ooh. So if you've been watching till now, you are the secret people who know we're doing a giveaway. Uh, we're giving away this really cool corkscrew that is like amazing. I mean, it has like its own zip code. It's very cool. <laughs> uh, we have a picture of it on Bakespace.com. If you go Bakespace.com slash news, you'll be able to see what the image is. Uh, look for the giveaway post, which is the first featured blog post on the website, and you'll be able to see it. You can win two ways. One is you can leave a comment uh, on our Google Plus page or chat with us on Twitter using our hashtag, UncorkChocolate. Uh, and also you can leave a comment on the Bakespace blog post about this Hangout. So Bakespace.com slash news, leave a comment on the blog post that says giveaway, that's talking about this Hangout, and uh, you could possibly tonight take home an amazing corkscrew. So we'll be watching those as well. Um, so I just wanted to make sure folks know about that giveaway um, as well. So I'm sorry, Sai, go ahead. What should we be looking for with this wine? For like, How would we know that this is the wine that would go with this chocolate? Well, you won't know that until you've tried the chocolate. Oh. But it's so been so long ago since I had the sip that I'm going to have to have another sip. <laughs> <laughs> At what point do we try the chocolate? <laughs> one, 
once once you've got a good feel for the characteristics of the wine, mm -hmm. then you can taste the chocolate. You just need about probably about a third of this little square, and you're just going to put it in your mouth and let it rest on your tongue for at least six <laughs> seconds. I started Ooh. chewing. No, 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 no chewing. <laughs> Let it rest on your tongue because the warmth of your mouth is going to start to draw out the fat content of the chocolate and that's going to release the first flavor notes. Now this Try chocolate is... peas. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always tell people that the only part of your mouth uh, that doesn't have taste buds are your teeth. So if you want to taste something, it seems a shame to use them, really. <laughs> I think I'm going to start eating chocolate this way yeah. every time. So that was certainly, delicious. Certainly Ooh. break up the chocolate. You can nip at it with your teeth, but then you just want to really treat it like a lozenge and move <laughs> it around your mouth, uh, let it coat your palate. As you know, different parts of the tongue and the mouth pick up different aspects of flavor. So you want to pull out all the flavor you can from this chocolate. And this is a chocolate that uh, is blended together using cacao beans specifically for a good balance of flavor. There's a nice sort of citrus edge to the fruit notes in this chocolate. And then it finishes with that lovely sort of honey sweetness of a semi-sweet chocolate. Mm -hmm. So once the chocolate is melted in your mouth, uh, and don't feel that you have to get rid of every trace of chocolate, but if you've still got some chocolate clinging to your palate, take another sip of the wine, let the wine wash over the remains of the chocolate, and notice the contest. What's happened to the wine now? Does it taste different than it did before the chocolate? And if it does, is it better, worse? What's happened to it? It's made the wine rounder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. A little bit more mellow. I think so, yes. Despite the, the malolactic fermentation that this Chardonnay goes through, it still has a nice acidic edge to it. Mm -hmm. And that acidity is neutralized by the chocolate. Mm -hmm. So you're getting a much smoother, rounder mouthfeel to the wine. It almost seems this process is really <laughs> satisfying. Like, mm. even though I only had this much chocolate, <laughs> yeah. I feel like I had something super strong, like, not strong, mm -hmm. um, but just really, like, a wonderful experience. Like, like luxurious. It, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. We don't yeah. usually, we don't usually stop to enjoy the chocolate. We're just mm. eating it, right? By allowing, right. allowing to, it to melt on your tongue and then to taste the wine right after it's like your taste buds are mm -hmm. are super aware and you're getting every bit of pleasure you possibly can from that tiny square of chocolate mm -hmm. mm. yeah and of course there's as much difference between tasting chocolate and eating it as there is between tasting wine and drinking it mm -hmm. Mm. Maya, I love the description that you gave about instead of a pairing, a contest. Would you could you just mm -hmm. talk about that a little more? I think that's fascinating. Well, uh, with with one exception on our, our tasting flight tonight, I think the reason that people uh, maybe don't enjoy a chocolate and wine pairing um, is because they're looking for this complementary aspect to it. They're looking for a wine that goes with the chocolate. And that's really hard to do. And I think if you look at it more as an adventure, as a contest, as an exercise in change, in effect, then you're going to get more out of the experience. I love that. Mm, I'm going in for a little more. Yeah. We got three more pairings to do. Right. Repeat as necessary. All right. <laughs> <laughs>
No, should we? Should we, I feel I feel bad because all this wine I'm gonna have open tonight. I feel like I should invite all my neighbors over and be like, "Hey, come on over." <laughs> Don't feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. There won't be any chocolate left over for sure. I'm, that's, all right. Or I'll I'll hide it. I'll hide it. I'll be like, "There's no chocolate here." Well, I initially, when I got the package, I went, "This is all you sent me." And so they sent you eight pieces. And now that I've got it laid out, I'm like, oh, I'll be eating this for the next month. Yeah. Or two days, depends. Especially if you let it melt on your tongue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you were paying attention, Babette. You were like, oh. <laughs> like I ate it. You're like. I love it. Every time I did something, it was like I was always like three steps ahead. I'm like, oh no, I've already eaten the chocolate. Um, so, Sai, should we move on to the next? Yes. Uh, the, yes. What Let's is the next on. pairing? The next pairing is going to be a Cabernet Sauvignon, and this is paired with the Scharfenberger 70% bittersweet. This is a and this one. bittersweet chocolate, yes. Okay. Smells awesome. Mm. So, repeat. First, you sip the wine. Okay, you know what? I fell behind, people. Mm. I, what wine are we doing? The Cabernet. We're doing the Cabernet, which is actually based on a Cabernet Sauvignon. A little, little Syrah added to it. Mm. Now this is a, like any Cabernet, a fairly full-bodied wine. Stands up to a more intense chocolate. But it's on the lighter side of full-bodied, if there is such a thing. Now this is the, Ooh. this is, I love this. Mm. I wow. Love this. Wow, it's that's nice great. balanced tannin. This is lovely wine. Mm -hmm. It is lovely. So we're going to pair it with the 70%. So once you've sipped the wine, repeat with the chocolate. A little square on your tongue, let it dissolve. Now this chocolate is made from a blend of eight or nine different cacao beans from all over the world, blended together to create the flavor profile we're looking for here. And the flavor profile of this chocolate is much more red fruit, which makes mm -hmm. it an ideal chocolate to pair with full-body bread. It's got lovely sort of dried raspberry notes at the beginning. And a long, long finish. Mm. Wow. This was the first chocolate that Scharfenberger made, actually. This is the one that started it all. Oh, this is delicious. It's funny because usually when I see bittersweet, I'm always like, do not buy that. That's for baking. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but you that's know, because we're so used to the cheap chocolate. Mm -hmm. Getting into the premier prestige chocolate. I worked years and years ago for... Um, oh, I totally forgot the chocolate here. And... <laughs> and it was like during Valentine's Day season, which was horrible. But that was it. I'm like, oh, I don't like dark chocolate. And you get the premier, delicious, high-quality chocolate, and you're like, oh, that is good. Exactly. What's so yes. interesting to me about this is how the wine seems to bring out the berry notes in the chocolate. Mm -hmm. I've never tasted berry in chocolate before. But when you do this with the wine and then the chocolate, it just, it's like... It does. But it brings out berry in the chocolate. Mm -hmm. Good. See, I'm getting a little bit of tobacco, so I don't get the berry so much, but the tobacco really goes with the the lighter tannins in the wine and kind of just gives you this mm -hmm. less seductive kind of pairing. Yeah. Well, if you've tried the wine over the chocolate and noticed the change in the wine, I think the opposite is also true. It really sort of brings down the wine. It mellows the fruit notes in the wine. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a spa day in your mouth. Mm. <laughs> it's very relaxing. Exactly. 
I do want to uh, put a shout out on Google Plus. Rita Tatil said, "I would have never thought to pair Chardonnay with chocolate. I'm going to try it." Um, uh, Kathy, uh, Kathy, I always say your last name wrong. It's I think it's Wechart. Uh, her father was a famous baker and had a bakery um, in Minnesota. So Kathy is awesome. She's been around for a really long time with us. Uh, Francois Villeneuve, I always say your name, hopefully right. Uh, and also um, Susie White. Wyshack also commented as well um, about the corkscrew. Uh, Rhonda Bacon was commenting earlier about pairing the wine with the with the cheesecake. We were talking about that when we first uh, chimed in this morning. And also, um, let me see, uh, let me see who else. Anthony White, Jennifer Essad, uh, Octavio Sweet and Savory Tastings also chimed in, and Jennifer Gonzalez. Anyone on Twitter, Renee? Yeah, we have a few people who are tuning in. Who are tuning in. Uh, the Moon Muse is joining us and wants to know how to pair a sea salt Scharfenberger chocolate um, with caramels. Is looking for a good red recommendation. Cy, do you have any? A, a red with the sea salt chocolate. For sea salt, sea salt chocolate and caramels. Oh gosh, that's a challenge. Yes, the salt and the the caramel. I. You see, one of the things that I don't do is to pair something that's overly sweet with a wine. Um, mm -hmm. My golden rule is that the wine should be as sweet, if not sweeter, than the chocolate that you're pairing it with, mm -hmm. um, and that will create uh, a better pairing. So if it's something as sweet as a caramel, I would definitely pair that with a dessert wine or a port, mm -hmm. red dessert wine or a port. I think that would be the most successful. I do a bourbon too. Yes, absolutely. Oh, a bourbon! I like oh, that. Bourbon. <laughs> would, it with, would it work with this one, or do you think no? Yes, we'll we'll come to that with the sweet oh. chocolate. Yes. Let me let me just give a few more shout outs on Twitter. Um, Figtails is joining us. Hey, uh, I think we have a new motto. Figtails likes our motto: always be prepared for chocolate and wine. Uh, Angela206 is joining in. Uh, Mama Caruso says she's chewing away on her wine right now and she can't wait to start drinking her chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we're inspiring a few people to do some tasting of their own. Uh, uh, Wiggly LaRue, which I think may be the best all-time Twitter handle, is uh, drinking Cocoa Bon Red Blend and uh, is enjoying a glass with a 74% Valhona dark chocolate. Glad you're doing that. Thanks for joining in. And uh, uh, Mama Caruso also says that she's having a uh, book group over next week, and she wants to replay uh, this tasting with them. And I, I think they will Ooh. definitely enjoy that. That sounds awesome. I wish we were there yeah. so we could participate mm -hmm. with her. All right. I think we should. I think we should go. Did everyone get to try it? Because I'm, I'm going to keep drinking the wine, and, and my chocolate is getting smaller and smaller, but I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, really, I really like that combination. Yeah, I, lo also, I love it. Be yeah. prepared is good, but my motto is excess is best. So. <laughs> <laughs> on, bitches. Sorry. This is the internet, right? It's not FCC. <laughs> <laughs> I do really love the chocolate. I really absolutely, I don't know if you guys yeah. can see that. This is really good. This is the um, the seventy nine percent, which I think is yeah, delicious. Or seventy percent. You know, my eyesight. I did come your better half. Especially yeah. when you have wine goggles. <laughs> you know, the, the other day I, I woke up, Eric, and I was like, Eric, what does it say on this shampoo bottle? Like, what do I do? <laughs> Or it wasn't shampoo, it was cleaning solution. I was like, what does this say? I could not see it to save my life. And I'm like, oh no. This is this is this is the year it changes for me. But at some point your hand, your arm won't be long enough <laughs> to be able to see. That's true, but chocolate is always good to taste. So I'll just have to keep experimenting. True. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So should we move on to the move um, on to the next one? Yes, yes, yes. All right. This. I'm breaking out the big ass glass. Yes. 
So this next wine is uh, Ferrari Carano's Prevail West Face. And we're going to pair this with the darkest of our eating chocolates, an 82% extra dark. And again, all these chocolates are different. It's not just the cacao content, uh, the balance between cacao and sugar that makes these chocolates different. It's the fact that they're created from different blends of cacao beans that are creating different flavor profiles. So I'm really looking forward to this yeah. one. So this is a really big, powerful red. This is a deep colored, luscious red um, that you need to stand up to this chocolate. This is an intense chocolate. Wow. Mm. Awesome. Mm. Now that that's eighty two, I can I can actually mm -hmm. read that one. <laughs> so very I'm, minimal sugar. I'm not a dark chocolate fan, so I'm gonna be open minded. Well, I think like a lot of people who say that, you've just been eating the wrong dark chocolate. Sai, <laughs> si, you and I are gonna be good friends. <laughs> The wine, I can almost not even taste the wine. It's so light, which I'm surprised. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about flavor characteristics, you can talk about flavor notes, the fruitiness, the spiciness, the woody, earthy notes. Uh, you, you talk about acidity. You talk about tannins. You talk about sweetness. You talk about finish. And all of those things uh, are as relevant to chocolate as they are to wine. Mm -hmm. So when you're tasting the two together, you're sort of playing off those characteristics in one against the characteristics in the other. This one, I think, is particularly interesting. The, I feel like uh, it's in my nose. Mm -hmm. That's the alcohol. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's better to take it through the mouth, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Is there residual sugar on this? It seems very dry to me. Um, that I don't know. Okay, no worries. I don't see it on the on the the, the text sheet, but. Hmm. You mean in the wine? Hmm. Because as I mentioned before, that. You want wine that's mm -hmm. as sweet or sweet or sweet as sweet as the wine, so that because if one is markedly sweeter than the other, it's going to get the food or the the exactly. wine in the balance. Yeah, and the, the taste, sugar is going to dominate. Yeah. It doesn't taste sweet, but it seems to really work together. It does. I think so. I think this is a, a meeting of, of two alpha characters here, two alpha personalities, this wine and this chocolate. Um, and I think they set up quite a battle in your palate, the supremacy. They do. I, I am, and from, in, at least with my palate, the, the chocolate ends up winning the battle. So mm -hmm. winning just from the perspective of the battle um, because when I first try try the wine, I just get the fullness and the richest richness of the wine, and then when I bring in the chocolate, it's like the chocolate is just taking over, and and then when I try the wine again, I lose the taste of the wine. So for me, I wouldn't do this one again for myself because the chocolate dominates the wine in my mouth, and. Um, and then, you know, the other thing is that everybody's taste is different, right? Absolutely. So we all, all of our palates are, are different. We're going to respond differently th to things depending on our own unique mouth and palate. You know, at least with, um, your description, it's making me, it's giving me a little bit of a kettle corn effect, though. Like, uh -huh. I want the chocolate and then the wine and then the chocolate. <laughs> I'm, I'm really liking this combo here. <laughs> I think yes. my favorite combo was the last one. Like I like this. Yes. I think this is delicious. But I think the last one was the. I think uh, I think Scharferberger probably they hit it out of the park. This is I guess this is my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that is crazy. That is the perfect wine pairing chocolate. Now, when people are at home, Sai, and they're thinking mm -hmm. like they're they're watching this, or they go to the grocery store and they forget everything that we've just 
talked about. Mm -hmm. um, what are some, maybe some tips that, because uh, I know we still have one more pairing to go through, but what are some mm -hmm. tips that home cooks can kind of um, keep in mind when they're, if, you know, maybe they're buying some wine for a particular meal, but then maybe just they can get one bar of chocolate that could set off for their dessert for the end of the evening, or maybe even start mm -hmm. with the chocolate would be really Why fun not? too. Yeah. Um, just a few golden rules. Obviously, you want to buy a good quality chocolate. You want to buy a fine chocolate with a high cacao content, um, and you just want to follow the basic rule that um, you pair a light chocolate with a light wine. And like we've uh, just done here, you pair an intense high cacao content chocolate with a big intense red. So if you just follow those simple rules, you've got a, a chance of it working for you. You know, what you can also do is shave the sharpened burger um, and put it on beef, mm -hmm. and it would really make a good pairing as well. Yes. Yeah, so chocolate on beef? Yeah, if you shave mm -hmm. it um, and kind of cook it into the beef, it will actually make an awesome pairing with a really a, a more stringent wine like a cab or a Syrah. Mm -hmm. So kind of the American mole? Yeah, I was just yeah. going to say, it's like a mole, like, but yes. just with the chocolate part. <laughs> yeah, well the other thing to do is to make a dry rub out of uh, cacao nibs, uh, which is also a great way of introducing a cacao flavor to meat. Okay, Elise, I see those wheels turning. Are we going to get a recipe? <laughs> <laughs> I've been going off the clock. <laughs> Wait, did you just did you just try two different? You tried a wine and a different. I chocolate? did. The ca I went off book. I'm sorry. I'm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. That's okay. It works. I may have to try that. I'm running out of glasses. I realize I only brought two glasses, and I'm like, I'm literally downing the wine. <laughs> the you just need to, yeah, exactly. I'm like, no one will know. Nanette, what was that that pairing that you just tried? Was that oh, the I tried the um, the Cabernet Sauvignon, the 2012. Mm -hmm. It's the 82 percent. Okay. Can I'm we try that? Or am I? I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna circle back and try that. Sorry, I'm mm. hijacking the feed. No, no. You know, I have a ton of of uh, of this type of wine from our wedding that I have left over. I think I may have to um, try some stuff. Okay, so you tried that with the dark chocolate. Okay, I mean with the extra dark eighty two. Right, the um the brown with the cabernet. That works really well, mm. Nanette. Mm. Just saying. Mhm. Mm I have a knack for this. Just say it. <laughs> I think everyone who's going to watch this video is going to go to the grocery store and start, like, people are going to wonder why people are buying all this chocolate and <laughs> wine in pairs. <laughs> and that's it in the dark. As, as a woman, I think, you know, when, when, when people say I don't do carbs, I'm like, carbs make me happy. <laughs> Red wine and chocolate make me happy. See, so if we... Eight more chocolate and red wine, we'd be happier. And wouldn't it be a better thing? Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, Nanette, over on Peaceful, uh, over on Twitter, Peaceful Cooking has tuned in, and she is agreeing with you. Sharpened burger, chocolate, and wine, two of my favorite things. So I think the world would be a better place if we could give everybody some wine and chocolate. Absolutely. Oh. You can solve all the world's problems. Exactly, exactly. Or just the major problems. Just Let's see. But see, now this is the new marketing plan. I like the old Scharfenberger wine and chocolate marketing plan, but Scharfenberger <laughs> creates <laughs> world peace. <laughs> How is that a no? A, a not a Nobel Prize winning? We create peace. Exactly. <laughs> Clearly, I've been drinking a little too much. <laughs> You know, I, I had never seen this flavor, the coconut and macadamia. This is one of our new chocolates. This has only been launched a couple of months, I think. Um, this is a brand new milk chocolate for us, 33% milk, as opposed to our 
standard milk, which is a 41%. Um, and the inclusions in here is a toasted coconut and a finely chopped macadamia. <laughs> you guys um, are too much fun. <laughs> um, this is dessert. We're going to pair this with the um, the dessert wine. It's a neon uh, Eldorado Gold, beautiful dessert wine. Um, and this is we started talking about how it the pairings are a contest rather than a complement. This is the exception, I think. This is a wine and a chocolate cream that really complement each other. Mm -hmm. uh, to, Create the perfect dessert. You know what I love about this bottle is that it's like single serving. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> if I'm at the grocery store, I don't look like totally like a crazy wino. <laughs> Maybe not single serving, but so what? What flavors am I supposed to be looking for here? Because I don't. What did you say, Elise? I said peach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because the other the other ones I feel like they were they were strong that I felt like at the beginning I couldn't smell anything until you said peach, mm -hmm. and then it was clear. Maybe a little apricot too. Mm -hmm. yes. Ooh, apricot, this is delicious. Mmm. Mm. Oh my god, that's so good. <laughs> and now try this with this chocolate. Oh my god! Wow. Okay, do we well, do the I same thing? Where we? Go ahead. I cheated earlier when the package came in, and I mm -hmm. grabbed one of these. This, and I don't even like coconut. This is amazing. This, this is, is really smart. A smart combo. Mm. Wow. The coconut really comes out in that chocolate after you had some wine. Mm -hmm. Really comes out strong. Kind of like a sophisticated like almond joy, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Really classy. Oh my god, this is like my new favorite dessert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. This is a dessert. Please this call this is low calorie. Just <laughs> one of these and a little bit of wine. And that's it. That's the dessert. That's mm -hmm. all you need. What more do you need? But you kind of get it now. This has like about fourteen percent residual sugar, so this is very sweet. Yeah. So yes. it's really, you know. You need the sweetness of a milk chocolate. Right. With it. Yes. This is like the best thing I've ever eaten. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. This blows away like any cheesecake, carrot cake, chocolate cake, wow. mousse. I want, I want us to all remember this moment. <laughs> it's like a life changer for me. <laughs> I'm going to be eating this like till I die. Well, and I'm not a chocolate um, fan, but the coconut really kind of melds it together and makes it kind mm -hmm. of liquidy, mm -hmm. luscious. Mm. <sighs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> the hazelnuts in here too, is that right? No, macadamia. macadamia. So, and because there's just a little crunch, mm -hmm. it, it encourages you to chew which then gets even more of everything mixed around in your mouth. Yeah. It's awesome. Good. I agree, Elise. Oh, this, is, this chocolate is delicious. But it's really, like I said, I don't like coconut, and I'm obsessed with this. It is such a smart, yep. well-integrated you know, chocolate, and then you pair it with the, um, the Semillon sweet. It's... Oh. <laughs> it's really amazing. Because I had some of the chocolate. I had some of the chocolate before. I tasted all the chocolate, of course, before. Uh -huh. <laughs> Who didn't? And the coconut wasn't nearly as distinct as it is when you um, have it with the wine. Yes, I think the sweetness of the wine um, brings down the sweetness in the chocolate and allows the coconut to come forward more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, if I was at home right now watching this, I would, I would, I would turn off the TV. I would turn off the computer. <laughs> I would get in the car and I would go buy this 
immediately. Oh, oh well, I'm surprised that we still have our video on because you guys were going to watch just a little too much. My glass has a hole in it. This will change your life. <laughs> That's oh my God. This pairing will change your life. <laughs> oh my God, it's so good. It's so well, good. And okay, actually, okay. I thought it would be the weakest pairing of all of them because it seemed like so much was going on with it, with with the chocolate. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's so I, I really like me, Annette. Huh? Blasphemy. I know. Amy I, and I have talked about it. Her husband thinks wine and chocolate pairing are, what does Joe say? I don't know. He's wrong. Anyway, <laughs> he is very oh, insane about it. But last night, I had a, um, a hangout with eight other wine writers. And at the end, I said, hey, I'm going to do this thing tomorrow with, with these, you know, foodie people. And I said, wine and chocolate, do you guys have any tips? And the eight of them in unison said, no! <laughs> See, that's that snobby thing that we try to overcome with our rule breaking. Ah, uh, yes, but oh, see, wow. now, now I can woo them Water. to the dark side with the Scharfenberger chocolate and the Sauterne-like mm -hmm. wine. It's like, and, but see, I was, I was kind of with them yesterday. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> well, no, but, I mean, didn't you, I mean, I was kind of like, oh, we're going to have this buttery Chardonnay with this, dark chocolate and it's going to be awful. <laughs> and to me it wasn't perfect, but it was kind of, the way you couched it, it's not that it pairs, but it changes and, mm. it, and, it, and it makes you think it, about it in a different way. Mm. I may or may not serve it that way, but I don't know, it, was just, it made me think about it a little bit differently, which made me diff you know, think about the wine differently and how you present things to other people, which is kind of like what I do as a, you know, for a living is yeah. change people's perceptions, you know, getting people to think things about it differently or just, I don't know, I'm babbling. No, 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 I, I hear what you're saying. I agree. Now, Sai, I, I, I like both this, I like this wine and I really like this chocolate. I have to say, I feel like it's a touch sweet for me. So mm -hmm. could I backtrack maybe with one of the reds and this, milk chocolate or would that, you think that might be too much of a clash? Um, I think that would be a clash because okay. you would have, then have a chocolate that's very much sweeter than the wine mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think you'd get any benefit from that pairing. Um, I think if it's a red wine you'd, you'd really want to stick with the dark chocolate and save the milk. Either for with the Chardonnay. wine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could work with the Chardonnay. The milk chocolate can also work very well with the sparkling wine. Mm -hmm. Like a Riesling, maybe? Yes, Not absolutely. a sparkling, but a Riesling might be. Yeah, like, there's, there's any sweet, sweet, white sweeter wine. whites, yeah. Mm -hmm. I really like this. <laughs> wait, wait, look at the, wait, wait, look at the level on that. That was just you? There's not, there's, I didn't drink that much. Oh, I saw it. Did you see me like <laughs> that? You'd been working on it for like an hour or two. It was like <laughs> no, this is a great dessert wine. I liked it though. Oh my god, I love it. I, I lo but the chocolate, just the little pieces of coconut, totally wow. blew me away. That chocolate, and I, you know, I didn't really think I was much of a fan of milk chocolate, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that is. <laughs> And it is like a sophisticated almond joy. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, Mama Crusoe tweeted a funny photo. She has some almond uh, joys, probably left over from uh, Halloween, and with her mason jar wine. And she said, "This is the closest she's going to get tonight to the." <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. I think you can pretend that you're in Hawaii with this. <laughs> uh. You know, we, we have about three minutes left till the show, unfortunately. Boo! Oh, I know. Boo! See, an hour goes by fast, people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we have four tastings, and we just went through all four. If we had a fifth one and a fifth joke... No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so, Sai, before we um, 
before we start heading out, do you have any advice for uh, anything that we haven't covered that you want to make sure that people at home know about um, not only uh, Scharfenberger but just the idea of being more open to chocolate in um, in different pairings? Have you ever paired with beer? Yes, I have. Uh, that can work very well. It, it's more of a challenge, um, I think. Yeah. I think a dark chocolate with a stout uh, can be a very good pairing. You know, Renee, the beeriness today yes. tweeted out to me saying, oh, next time do beer. So I was like thinking, maybe <laughs> we'll have to have a uh, side back for a beer. Uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to put you on the hunt side. We'll yeah. have to send you back out to do some beer tasting. And I also like chocolate and whiskey pairings, too. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Very nice. yes. Oh, that's... Now you have me talking. Now you have uh -huh. my now attention. Are we talking yeah. scotch or are we talking bourbon? Um, oh. I Usually single malts. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Particularly with the very dark chocolate, that lovely sort of mm -hmm. spicy, smoky, dark flavors go well mm -hmm. together. Little Glen Levitt, too. <laughs> well, you know, I think that sounds like a, a, a great idea to maybe come up with some other pairings like that because I thought, uh, but that when you told me about your idea for the show tonight, I thought it was just brilliant because it, you can keep these items on hand for, you know, an unlimited amount of time. If people come over, you don't have to worry about putting a dessert together. So mm -hmm. many people are concerned about maybe putting too much food on a table or, or, or maybe some people don't want to have dessert but this is just enough of a little sweet something to finish mm -hmm. the meal without it being too much work on the host and it being you know too much for after a dinner party so I think this is this is terrific particularly with the holidays perfect, coming up. Do you think it's like the perfect you know it's a you don't have to have a big dessert after every exactly. meal right no. Sometimes you just want a little something, a little sweetness, and this is, it's just, it's perfect, and it's so satisfying. But you do need a dessert after every meal. <laughs> <laughs> but this, you could have a dessert like this without it getting, without it getting too, too, too decadent. I like this. Yeah. And no foo-foo needed. Exactly. Also, a piece mm -hmm. of fruit, you could do a little fruit plate with it, or a bit, you know, I like the European cheese plate, and then the chocolate, and it all... Oh, but this was fantastic. This was fun. No, it was great. Thank you. What were you going to say, Renee? I could love just one more question to you. We had an earlier question today. Somebody on Google Plus said, what wine would you serve with a chocolate marbled cheesecake? A chocolate cheesecake. I think that would be an ideal uh, occasion to serve something like a Riesling or a Gewürztraminer. I think great. that would be really nice. Thank you. Something on the slightly sweet side. <laughs> well, I, I'm definitely now a fan of the um, the milk chocolate, coconut, and macadamia. Yeah. And then also the 70% bittersweet, which I thought bittersweet yeah. I would not be a fan of at all. I was like, well, not at all. But I think it stole my heart. But this one is really the one. What about you guys? Which What, what was your favorite pairings, guys? These two. <laughs> Oh, the dark. Yeah. See, well, the I sort of liked. I went off book, and I think this one worked really well. Mm -hmm. I'm all about this one. Which one, oh. Amy? I'm all about the coconut, macadamia, and the botrytis semillon. Fire toward your face. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, very <laughs> nice. You like that one, Babette? Yes. Sai, what about you? What's your favorite pairing? Well, I think it depends on the occasion, but certainly for the end of a meal, I think that dessert wine with the uh, milk chocolate is just wonderful. Yeah. I think you can get to yes with this one. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the um, that would be the, the um, liberal version of Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> you can get to yes. Yeah, like so what is that, Amy? I don't think I've ever heard that. I don't think I've ever heard that. And I don't ever want to hear it again, Amy. <laughs> I love that. No, actually, I love that. I think that's really awesome. Yeah, I think it's a great place to end. So I want to make sure that everyone. <laughs> okay. I want to make sure. I want to make First sure that everyone. Yes. 
everyone has a uh, opportunity to let folks know who are watching the show where they can find you online. Um, people who are tuning in. Also, to remind everyone that we are giving away two corkscrews. That's really hard to say when you've had a couple of drinks, by the way. Um, <laughs> also, the chocolate that like it blew my mind. I'm gonna when when my husband gets home tonight, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna have him try this with the coconut thing and blow his mind. Um, You're gonna get to yes is what I'm yes, hearing. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I should have done this like 13 years ago when I first met him. <laughs> damn, 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 damn. I'm gonna. You know what? That's actually. That's actually a really cool. No no, 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 no. I'm going in a totally different direction. But when you want to give somebody a gift, you can, if you take what Sai said, like for the holidays, right? So you give them like, you know, five different candy bars, um, Sharp and Burger, pick, get like five or four of the things that we tried, get like some small bottles of wine, and then give them the directions on what they should do. I mm -hmm. think that is like, that would be a cool gift to give somebody for the holidays. Especially a man, because we always have to give them directions, because they won't ask. <laughs> I like giving them directions. So like a wine chocolate pairing in a box gift. I like that. Yeah, exactly. It's a great idea. Yeah, we will we'll have a, a chocolate pairing kit uh, out very soon. It will be a box of different tasting squares with a guide inside it on how to do a wine and chocolate. Awesome. In the storms before the holidays. Yay. Oh, that's, that's really cool. That's super cool. Well, I want to make sure everyone uh, says where we can find everyone. So, Amy, do you want to go first? Let sure. us know where people can find you online. You can find me at www.anotherwineblog.com. Oh, now, Sai, do you want to let everyone know? Because I know, because Scharfenberger has, if you guys are following Scharfenberger, you got to make sure you go to their pages. They're very cool. Mm -hmm. um, on Facebook, it's Scharfenberger Chocolate Maker. On Instagram and Pinterest, it's Scharfenberger. And then also you can go to Scharfenberger.com to find out all, where you can find all of these chocolates. Um, and then obviously reverse the video and see which wine we paired with them as well. And then uh, Ferrari Carano uh, was the wine that we used tonight as well. So make sure you check them out. Thank them very much for um, for giving us this wine. It was awesome. This is this is probably was my favorite for sure. And not not because I'm just a sweet fan, but I think the combination blew my mind and uh, will totally change my life forever. Um, so Sai. <laughs> Right, where can people find you? Because I looked for you online and I, I couldn't find like I couldn't find your Twitter <laughs> handle, your Facebook page. I couldn't stalk you. Where can I find you? Um, I, I yes, just through the, the Scharfenberger website. Um, I don't have my own website or Facebook. Now, Sai, can can people can people like send a message to Scharfenberger and say what choc what chocolate should I get to go with whatever for? Can people oh. reach you? Yeah, on the website there is a, a fairly good pairing guide there on pairing our chocolates with all sorts of foods and beverages. So there's lots of hints on the website. Awesome. Now, what about you, Elise? Where can people? I mean, we obviously know where we can find you because it's simply recipes.com. But also, where else are you? Are you? All right, I'm on Facebook. Facebook.com/slash simply recipes. Pinterest, I've just recently taken a huge dive into Pinterest, and I'm pinning like crazy. Pinterest.com slash Simply Recipes. And then also on Twitter at, hash, at, a, at Simply Recipes. Awesome. And then we have Molly who chimed in too, but we're going to ignore Molly because she's part of the Scharfenberger team. <laughs> Hi, Molly. Sorry. Um, uh, Nanette. And you know, Renee, Nanette and I talked about doing another show called Nanette and Babette. <laughs> and one won't get. I was going to say, bad girls gone good. You know, Nanette, I was going to tell you that Renee and I have talked about doing a show called Wine with Wine. Basically, all we do is complain about stuff that we find. <laughs> But you want to know who I, where I'm at? Yes. Everywhere. I'm just a everywhere. Yeah. Um, basically, all of my social platforms are wine harlots with an S. Um, big on Pinterest, big on Instagram, 
Twitter, of course, 60,000 people follow me. And then, again, of course, Facebook. Um, so anyway, that's me. You know, Elise, I think, I f how many fa Facebook fans do you have? 750,000, something like that. <gasps> Ridiculous. <laughs> we have to bow to you. Yeah, I was like, now I feel like an asshole. <laughs> Seven hundred thousand. In the win world, sixty grand is like big money. Yeah, I know. <laughs> when you're like yeah. Kardashian famous. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I am never going to be invited back ever. <laughs> No, no, that's not true. That's not true. Renee, what about you? Where can folks find you? And what, what's coming up next week? What should people look out for, for some of your stories? Mm, well, the, the, I, uh, just, I, I went from food. I, was, I did an interview with a blender girl with Test Masters. Right. And then I uh, have an interview coming up with uh, Bob Harper about he's, he's trying to change the way we do sit-ups, believe it or not. And uh, so I, I, that's, I veer between food and health. <laughs> so that's, what I, that's the next thing I have coming health up. Health is so much more fun. Not. <laughs> I will drink to that. It's not as tasty, though. It's not as tasty. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Food's better. You guys are crazy. You guys are insane. <laughs> so everyone can find Renee on Twitter. Renee Lynch is her Twitter handle. Mm -hmm. uh, I am Babette Peppa. You can find me on pretty much every platform. Bakespace is the uh, username on all the platforms, except YouTube. It's Bakespace TV. I actually own, I have the Bakespace YouTube one, but they won't give me my password. I can't figure out <laughs> where it is. <laughs> so it's always like... I think you need a lawyer for that. Yeah, this user, like, exists. You can't get it. And I'm like, they're like, request your password exchange. And I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. So I think maybe... After I have a couple of these, in, some of these, I'm going to get really gutsy, and I'm going to contact YouTube and be like, give me my username back. Now, anyways. So. You guys know that Amy's day job is lawyering, so. Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> but she's a really nice human being. Well, <laughs> yes. She's a good lawyer. Not after her law firm sees this video. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Don't don't drive. Don't drive. No, I don't come from that. <laughs> All right, guys. So I want to let everyone know that next week we are teaming up with Disney for a very cool hangout. Um, we have. Uh, do you guys know Floyd Cordoz? He's the top masters chef who won Top Masters in like 2010. He's also the culinary consultant on the um, film The Hundred, uh, The Hundred, um, oh my god, I'm totally going by. Wine the and Chocolate. Foot journey? The Hundred Foot Journey? Yes, yes. That was a great movie. The Hundred Foot Journey. I'm like, for some reason, the wine. Did you guys see that movie? It was great. Wasn't it adorable? It was beautiful. I thought it was fantastic. No, I, I absolutely thought it was fantastic. And what I love about their um, his story is that it, it really mimics the film and it really mimics like his journey from being in India and in, uh, in Bombay and now that's Mumbai, that's where the character's from, and then also going to France and learning more um, like classical training with uh, with food. And then also he was the culinary consultant, but they actually had the people who were on the film go to culinary school. So they just didn't like, we weren't like just actors, like chopping stuff. They actually had to go and learn. So we're going to be wow. launching a recipe contest with them. We're going to be doing a hangout talking about fusion cooking, which we're really excited about. And um, I've had way too much wine because I can tell at the end I'm like, I should have mentioned this right at the beginning. <laughs> I'm going to remember the name of the film. Um, for some reason, uh, but no, it's, it's fantastic. I just saw it a couple days ago. And it's great. So, Renee, we're going to have a good time next week. So you guys should definitely tune in for that as well. Um, thank you so much to Sharpenberger for sponsoring the show. We have had a fabulous time. We've gone 18 minutes over. We're <laughs> stay on, on time, folks. But we've gone 18 minutes over what we were supposed to go over just because we've had such a good time. Sai, thank you so much for your time oh, and your expertise. Pleasure. And this is probably one of the best tastings we've ever had. Um, totally mind blowing. And uh, maybe we can get you to come back and do another tasting. I think if we do 
scotch, single malt, Renee and I would be in. I think the other women would be in as well. Let love it. So we'll, we'll see you guys next week. That's awesome. Yay. Thank All right, you. Guys. All right, Thank you. Thank you, Sai. Thank, Thank you so much, guys, Thanks. for coming. We'll Bye-bye now. And then everyone, everyone who's watching at home, remember, you can win the corkscrew by leaving a comment to us using our hashtag kitchen party or uncorked chocolate. And then also um, uh, on our blog, bigspace.com slash news, look for the giveaway uh, uncorked chocolate uh, post and then leave a comment there. And we're going to be giving away, within the next day, we're going to be giving away two of those corkscrews. All right, Renee, I will see you next week. And thanks so much to all of our guests for coming. We will see you guys next week. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.